There's a shortage of cybersecurity professionals in the United States, and it's such a big deal that the National Cyber Director wants to address the issue by removing degree requirements for cyber professionals, which I don't even necessarily think that's a bad idea. I think that the people who are the best in the world at cyber capabilities are the people who've been, you know, writing code and taking apart computers since they were five years old. I don't think that a four-year degree takes you from being an inadequate cyber professional to a cyber pro. I think that's something that you develop over the course of your life. So here's the reason for this potential decision because it has not actually happened yet. This is from clearancejobs.com, not clearance like as an on sale or anything. It's like clearance as in you have a security clearance for this job. So from clearancejobs.com, as of last October, the global cybersecurity workforce shortage hit a record high of just under 4 million, despite cybersecurity workforce actually growing by almost 10%. So the supply is growing, but the demand is growing at a faster pace. Now, according to cybersecurity workforce study released by ISC2, the nonprofit member organization for cybersecurity professionals, there were at least 500,000 cyber job listings in the United States as of last August. And they're citing degrees as the main thing holding people back from getting these jobs. So the Office of Personnel Management, OPM, is expected to introduce legislation that would build equity, they say. I mean, you know, I don't necessarily like that terminology because this whole DEI stuff's gotten a little crazy. But I, I'm actually, like I said, I'm in favor of the removing the degree requirements. You could probably develop a one-hour test to see if somebody's an adequate or inadequate cyber professional. So let me give you some reasons why this is such a big deal you know first and foremost we know the u.s power grid is completely inadequate and out of date it was built like 70 years ago and our former president made a movie about a cyber attack shutting off the u.s power grid and creating an apocalyptic situation still a valid concern because the u.s power grid is very susceptible to cyber attacks now here's some data on how much money cyber attacks cost the world each year cyber attacks cost the united states each year and what's projected to cost the u.s in the years to come so 2018 860 billion 2019 1.1 1 .1 trillion 2020 nearly 3 trillion fast forward to 2023 11.5 trillion fast forward to 2027 23.8 trillion you know and that's not just the private sector that's everybody that's people getting their bank accounts hacked that's people getting their identity stolen that's companies getting hacked that's like we saw casinos get hacked this year one of the most impenetrable supposed things that you could hack we see banks getting hacked, so. Today it's more important than ever to protect yourself online. That's why our sponsor's Aura. So here's what Aura could do for you, ready? Up to $2 million of insurance, white glove fraud resolution, 24 seven US based customer service, online antivirus, VPN, up to 20 devices, 10 per adult, safe browsing, password manager, online account monitoring, social security and personal info monitoring, identity verification monitoring, credit lock, bank fraud monitoring, adult parental settings. If you sign up now, you'll get a free 14 day trial to see what Aura could do for you for all those protection services. Click on the link below. It's aura.com backslash branding. So very serious issue. And if that doesn't scare you enough, our friends at the World Economic Forum decided to come out with six stories that defined cybersecurity in 2023. So first we have the U.S. developed a national cybersecurity strategy. I, I mean, I guess that's good to know. I, I didn't know that we did not have a cybersecurity strategy, but I guess at least we have one now. Number two from the WEF, Operation Cookie Monster. So Genesis Market, one of the world's largest illicit online marketplaces was shut down in 2023 in a police operation that involved over a dozen international law enforcement agencies. Operation Cookie Monster resulted in hundreds of thousands of stolen identities and online access credentials being seized. The FBI and Dutch National Police spearheaded the crackdown which resulted in more than 100 arrests worldwide and served as a major blow to global cybercrime efforts according to officials. Number three from the WEF, the right to be forgotten. An increasingly digital world has led to digital footprints with surprisingly long trails and details some people would rather the internet forgot. The concept of allowing people to request the removal of their personal information from the internet has been back in the headlines in 2023 after a Canadian court agreed that citizens have the right to be forgotten on Google searches. But this right is not recognized everywhere and even where it is, organizations don't always have to comply with requests. So concerns have been raised that legislation could lead to frequent and widespread removal of content and be used as a mechanism to censor or prevent scrutiny. Oh no, that would never happen. I can never imagine a situation where governments are using censorship to remove scrutiny or certain content. Anyway, number four from the WEF, the biggest DDoS attack ever. In October, we saw the biggest ever distributed denial service attack with internet companies, including Google and Amazon, warning users that these type of attacks could cause widespread disruption 
unless cybersecurity measures are stepped up. DDoS attacks, which aim to make websites unreachable by overwhelming them with bogus requests for data, are nothing new but they are becoming increasingly sophisticated and disruptive. The World Economic Forum's global cybersecurity outlook in 2023 points to the convergence of geopolitical instability, the arrival of AI that can amplify cyber attacks and a lack of cybersecurity expertise as drivers of such cyber risk. And that goes back to the beginning of the episode. There's a lack of talent in the cybersecurity industry. So get out there, guys. If you have cyber capabilities, this is the time for you. It's your time to shine. You're born in the right era. Number five from the WF, a gathering cyber storm. So there's a gathering cyber storm, said Sadie Kreese, a professional of cybersecurity at the University of Oxford. She said this during an interview at the World Economic Forum's annual meeting 2023 in Davos, Switzerland. The storm is brewing, she said, and it's really hard to anticipate just how bad that will be. Cyber attacks such as phishing, ransomware, and DDoS attacks are on the rise. Cloudfare, a major U.S. cybersecurity firm that provides protection services for over 30% of Fortune 500 companies, found that DDoS attacks increased 79% year-over-year in 2022. Against that backdrop, in November, the annual meeting on cybersecurity 2023 brought together 150 of the world's foremost cybersecurity leaders from business, government, international organizations, civil society, and academia to foster collaboration on making cyberspace safer and more resilient. So the same group that warned you about a global pandemic in 2019 is now warning you about a cyber storm as of 2023 going into 2024. So perhaps something that should be on your radar. Number six, again, going back to the beginning of the episode, a cybersecurity skill gap. The World Economic Forum's cybersecurity outlook in 2023 shows that 59% of business leaders and 64% of cyber leaders ranked talent recruitment and retention as a key challenge for managing cyber resilience. And the industries reported that a lack of skills were mainly in critical infrastructure industries like energy utilities. Energy utilities, power grid vulnerability, cyber skill gap. Guys, I am worried about a cybersecurity attack on the US power grid, I'm gonna say it. There's been too many red flags, creepy people talking about this, movies being made about by former presidents. I don't like all these signs swirling around this, you know, this is something that I've been focused on for years, and now all the signs are here, so the very least, be prepared for that type of situation and I hope to God that a reasonable president comes along and invests a sufficient amount of money to bring the U.S. power grid up to code, make it safe because nothing matters without energy. But if that doesn't happen by 2036, that'll be one of the first things I do. Remember, energy is the economy. Without energy, we have nothing. Think about any time you had a power outage at your house for just a couple hours. You're helpless. You have nothing. Your food goes bad. You can't go on your laptop or your cell phone. So prepare accordingly. And if you want to know what a U.S. power outage would look like if the national grid went down, check out this video I did right here about that exact topic. Stay safe. God bless. We'll get through it.